911. Where's your emergency? Hey, hello, there's someone breaking in my house. Help. What's Help. the address you're at? Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Uh, Russell, if you want to sit there again, yeah, it's fine. Like I saw my video. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, sure. Put in the pen, and then it should. Whenever device is different, then you can remove it so there's no password protection. Okay. Oh, okay. Choose screen lock. There you go. Do you want a glass of water, Russ? Uh, no, I'm good right now. Okay. Thank you very much. I can get into the phone now. I mean, right. it's not password protected. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see your point. That. We're good to go. So uh, the plan is that I will take it up to my lab and do an extraction of the device. Um, to do that, obviously, we're going to present you with our consent form and have you fill out the consent. Um, You're probably the best bet then. Because he can reach me anytime. Yeah, that's perfect. My cell is on there. If you'll keep me posted your progress, yeah, yeah, I can absolutely. just send him. Um, it's the only project that I have going on. Well, I have lots of projects, but this is my main project. I'll work directly on it, and then uh, I have to come back for a meeting here, too. But um, it just might be something that's done in hell, a half hour, and it could take overnight, depending on the two. So. Just call me. My phone will be on. Great. And then he, he'll call me from wherever. And then the form is just I, and he'll print his name here. Give permission to you, and then what we'll put here is St. Charles County uh, Cybercrime Task Force and Detective McLean. And we'll, you want to put some other kind of wording there, obviously. Uh, seize from, we'll just put our address. Uh, sorry, I'm showing it to you. Russ, here's what I'm asking, and, and Mr. Schwartz or, will correct me if uh, he has anything. I, and then just print your name right there. Give consent to uh, St. Charles County Cybercrime Task Force. We came up with the biggest, longest name we could. Uh, the corners. Should have an acronym. Well, we do, and it's, I can't remember <laughs> it, so I have to count how many C's are in there. Uh, and members of the Ohio Police Department to. So I gotta read this up there now. To search the property located at or seize from, we can just put 100 North Main. That's our address where we're sitting. Search permission to search is hereby given. I got turned. It. Sorry. Oh, you're Freely and voluntarily, and no force, threats, or other types of intimidation have been made or have been used to gain my consent in this matter. The property to be searched consists of, and then here's where we're going to write down. And I'm going to actually, with your permission, manipulate phones so we can tell what make and model. But it is a Hawaii. I can never say that word. Yeah. Ho Hawaii. We. We. H. U. Uh, I can spell it, but I can't say it. W. w a. I just said that. Embarrassment. A. E. I. I believe. Uh, let's see if we can get a model in Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> well, you say it better than I can. Because I can't remember the damn thing. It's a Google phone. That's why I tell everybody. Right. That's the last time, but on there, you can't see it very well up here, but there was a phone number and a name. 
So I'll give you the serial number if you don't mind putting the serial number down. It just says Dave. No, Dave, and it has a phone number. Any idea with it? The phone number, uh, when you call it, it's someone number? at the Labor Tribune. Um, the Labor oh. Union paper answers it, and they said there's no one named Dave working there. That's where we're at. So I just want to ask if he knows. Okay. Yeah. If you recognize the name or number. And ever, I can't, what is that word? Everyone throw disposable papers away. Is that Phones. Right? What does that say? Phones. 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 That, okay. It is the best copy we could get. I'll yeah. that. I'm sorry. I'm going to find a model number, Mr. Take Ford. Take two banks. Sure. Unless his money should be 100 to 100. 7P. 800 to 100. Okay. Take up back to the house. that word? Get rid of her. Oh, get rid of her. Uh, make, make it look like Russ's wife. Got it. Okay. Make Russ knife is sticking chicking right. out. Oh, sticking out. Okay. You're good. Did you, take, did you know this immediately? Well, no, what you have is a copy of a copy of the okay. original letters. Well, no, I can see the letters. Yeah. Well, and it's I, better I, when you have the, yeah. the first copy. I don't have the first copy. Uh, stash money at Mom Faria House, phone 20, whatever. Put in wood pile, left of driveway. Meet. You got me eight days latest. Meet eight days later. Oh, meet, meet a day later? Eight. Eight day. That's what I think it's about. Eight. To, uh, we'll get some of, does that say it's not? We'll get 10,000. That says 10,000? Yeah, like I said, that if you saw, it's better in the original <laughs> copy. Looks like. And then what's that? Oh, that's 10,000. see, of 10,000, get payment? Something to that effect. It, this copy doesn't do it justice. If you had saw the better copy, then this would make sense to you. Okay. All right. So that's official. Well, that's Hawaii, and then we'll have the serial number. Okay. Um, Are we in video right now? Yeah. Okay. And then I'll, uh, I, I would like to add a line. In the line, I'd like to write Hawaii, serial number, blah, blah, blah. And, and let me just read this first before uh, you put this down. And any associated cloud accounts because obviously with phones if they're in a sandbox mode you can see one thing but this phone's active so it'll be touching things outside the phone so I'm going to cover myself it might be touching if you got Facebook in California that's touching that I just want to make sure did you so, say sandbox yeah sorry you just did. meaning it's in a microcosm or it's, it's you know, secured right. um, and any associated cloud accounts and then we'll read the last paragraph Uh, and search of the data contained there. And it should also be noted that I possess the legal authority to authorize a police search of the premises and or property designated herein. I also release the seizing officers and examining or found police department are said members of responsibility of any possible accidental loss of data during the forensic examinations. That's never happened, but that's in there. Um, if that's all sufficient and uh, all parties agree to that, if you just sign here, uh, we obviously don't need a password, but you can put the phone number here. And, uh, I'll miss that. I'll that. Mr. Furia or Mr. Schwartz, do you have any questions for me about the procedure or what we're doing? Then uh, I will check out with my investigator and just head up to the lab and then as soon as that's complete, I will call him and probably have him call you because just, I'm working for him at this point. Okay, Detective Mayor. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. So Detective Myers will Mayor. Uh, shoot you a call and uh, get that lined up. Um, okay, okay, let's have the right here. Thank you.
here because I had no idea what it would be quicker and easier. Um, this was a note and uh, the, the, um, there was a phone number and, and the name Dave on it. So I wanted to ask you, <clears throat> this is the, it said Dave and this is the phone number. Do you immediately recognize that or? No. Uh, like I told Mr. Schwartz, it, when we call it, it comes back to the Labor Tribune in, I believe, somewhere in St. Louis. So, do you don't recognize that? Mm -mm. Okay. And then um, the timeline for August 10th and August 16th, that's um, one of the other things other than finishing the handwriting is done, which is five pages left handed still. <laughs> that's the hardest one. Man. I know, that's what uh, <laughs> Mr. Rogers had said. He's like, oh, we're going to be here in like 18 hours, but I get it. Um, I'll do my best. Okay. But as far as August 10th, that was, had you um, thought about what you're doing on August 10th? Um, in the morning, I was at my chiropractor's. I got there probably between 10 and 10.30. And who's your chiropractor? Stephen Gagliano. And where's his office at? It is at uh, Mexico and Birdie Hills. It's Better Health and Wellness Chiropractic. Have you been going to him long? Uh, since I got out of prison. Okay. So about a little over a year now. And what is it, what is it called? Better Health and Wellness. Okay. And in relation to the 7-Eleven, is it, which side of the street is it on? Uh, it is Caddy Corner across from 7-Eleven, it's next to McDonald's. Okay. I know exactly what you're talking about then. There's a little plaza right there between McDonald's and Plaza Tire. Okay. It's in that plaza. So your appointment was for 10 or 10.30? Yes. And then you were there for how long? A couple hours. He's my cousin, so we usually sit and have coffee. So okay. Probably was there for a couple of hours before going to lunch. And what, so when did you think you left there? Oh, probably sometime between 12 and 12.30. And then you went to lunch? I uh, went to lunch at Pantera's in the Fallon. Did you do the buffet? No, we usually get our own pie because we like a fresh pie, you know, what we like on it. So. All right. So you got to Pantera's. How long did you bring up Pantera's, do you think? Hour, hour and a half, maybe. <clears throat> and who were you there with? I was with a friend of mine, Steve Joes. J O S E. Do you have a number or any way to contact him? Uh, well, his number's in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is, is he a friend, relative, or? He's a friend of mine. Okay. Would there be any reason that um, whomever wrote this letter, because at the beginning it makes reference to Stevie Follow Hup. Um, I know we talked about this where you don't, you don't call and you don't have a friend or relative that goes by Stevie, but would there be any reason that someone else would know about Steve that would, um, uh, would Pam Hupp in particular, would she have any idea who your, who your friends or relatives are by the name of Steve? Not to my knowledge, no. And okay. I know for a fact that neither one of those individuals have ever in their life gone by the name of Stevie. Okay. Did, um, did your friend Steve, did he testify at all in uh, in Lincoln County? Would his name have ever come up? I never heard the name. Okay. No. And I, you, you know what I'm trying to get at is if there was any way... <coughs> She's resourceful. Anyone else would have that information? All right. Uh, so for Steve, his phone number will be in your phone? Mm-hmm. Okay. In fact, both of their phone numbers are in my phone. And Stephen is the cousin. Mm -hmm. And same thing, he didn't have anything to do with come up in any other proceedings before that someone would have been aware of? No, during the, uh, well, he had just moved back from Chicago. 
within the last two years. Okay. I've never heard either of those names till okay. we talked about this. Stephen Gagliano is your cousin, mm -hmm. and he moved here from Chicago like two years ago. Yeah, something like that. How long has been a chiropractor? Uh, about 20 years. And so you're at Pantera's for about one and a half hours? Yeah, roughly, I had to guess. Okay. And then after that? Uh, probably went to Walmart in Lake St. Louis. I know I had to run some errands that day, and then probably back home. Did you go to the Walmart in Lake St. Louis by yourself or with somebody? Or Yeah, I would have been by myself. Okay. And then with Steve Joes, did he meet you at Pantera's? Or yes. You? Okay. And you were driving whenever you went to mm -hmm. all these places, okay. And what kind of vehicle were you driving? You I was driving? driving my Jeep 2016, Jeep Wrangler. Mm -hmm. Talked about them last time, okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then after Lake St. Louis, you shopped for? Just miscellaneous personal items, I guess. I mean, I don't even remember what I bought that day. Any idea how long you were there? Maybe 20, 30 minutes. Okay. Every then, trip in Walmart. Well, some people take a lot of time. I don't like to take a long time. <laughs> I'm with you. Um, I like to go in and get what I need and get back out. And then after you got what you needed, you went to? Went home. Okay. Do you have any idea roughly of all the time that was you got home? I couldn't tell you, no. Was anybody else home when you arrived? Um, my mother would have been. Maybe my sister. And I know you told me what your mom's name is. What is her name again? Lucy. L-U-C-I. Same last name? Mm-hmm. And then your sister? It's Rachel. <clears throat> her last name? Same. Does she live in the house too? Or? Yes. Okay. So how old is Rachel? Uh, she Pardon. just turned 35. Do you her date of birth? Uh, it would be July 24th, 1981. And how old is your mom? Uh, my mom is 69. Do you know her date of birth? It is 10-13-46. And your mom was home for sure, maybe your sister as well? I'm sorry, my sister was home too, but I can't say for certain. Okay. And then on August the 16th, um, do you remember what, do you have a timeline for that, like starting in the morning? Uh, I was home all morning, and um, I guess I took a shower probably late morning towards early afternoon, and Shortly after getting out of the shower, my mom and my sister were getting ready to go shopping, and my father called me. And as I told you before, he has a friend that lives on that street who called him at work and told him what was going on. Okay, and so when you were home that morning, your mom and sister were there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyone else? No. Unless you want to count the dog and the ferrets. <laughs> ferrets? Yes, my sister has pickets. Okay. I have a dog. <laughs> All right. uh, did you ever leave the house that day? If I did, it probably wasn't until late afternoon sometime. <clears throat> All right, and you said you found out from your dad who your dad has a friend that lives. Yeah, a friend of his from work lives over there, and I didn't even know that until he told me, but she evidently was home from work that day, and saw what was going on and called him, and then he called me. Um, Do you know, so what's your dad's name? Richard. And then do you know his friend's name that lives on that street? I couldn't tell you. Do you know where he lives? He said that she lives two houses down from Pam. On uh, Little Brave? On Little Brave, yeah. So how's our we made We talked to them. Yeah, I would guess, yeah, if you talk to everybody on that street or anybody within a few houses. <coughs> Do you know if, uh, so your dad's friend 
Is that somebody he works with or just? It's somebody that he works with, yes. Okay, so the friend was at work too, and then? The no, I think she was at home and called another friend at work. Oh, the, the friend was all in Yes. Okay. And then someone called that woman friend and said, hey, this is what's going on? Well, no, the, the friend that lives there called another friend at work. Okay. Because evidently, I don't know, she didn't, maybe didn't have my dad's number, and that friend called my father. Okay. And then we already went. Um, I showed you Lewis Heldenberger's picture. You didn't you've never seen him. Um, I showed you the note. You didn't recognize anything with that. You don't recognize Dave. That name or number. Um, mm -hmm. And then the uh, I know uh, last time we had talked in the note, it had given specifically your your address your. You're at your mom and dad's house mm -hmm. at 120 Sunclow, and then it made reference to putting the money in a wood pile. So we're kind of talking about that, but do we decipher what may be interpreted as a wood pile? Or my dad has some landscaping timbers, you know, for mm -hmm. doing making flower boxes and that. That might are they in a pile somewhere? Yeah, they're next okay. to his old. He's got a 1969 dart. You know, that he's restoring and they're right next to that. So, okay. Um, Anybody driving by could see it. Do um, your parents have any kind of video camera surveillance system on their house? Uh, no, but I think our across the street neighbor does. They do. Anybody else on the street? Or? Mm, not that I'm aware of. And just so you're clear, you continue to say your parents. Your mom and dad don't stay live together, correct? Yes, they do. Oh, they do? Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Um, Okay. Yeah, we're... I didn't know that. They're not the norm. They've been together for 47 years. <laughs> and they... Did they... So are they divorced or something? Or no. Or? Okay. I was right. confused. Mom and Dad just celebrated their 47th wedding anniversary in July. Um, so across... There's a house over there that you know... Our house is kind of like on a point like this. Right. And there's a house over here... Uh, that my sister noticed the other day said, oh, I think he's got uh, video cameras out there. Okay. So, Has anybody talked to them that you know of? Not that I'm aware of. Um, of whether actually a lot of people have cameras just to give the appearance that they're really Right, so I don't, I haven't seen the cameras. I don't know if they're okay. functioning. My sister just said that she noticed them over there and that if he had cameras and they were functioning, they might be pointing towards our house. Okay. Um, so the other thing I wanted to accomplish is the five more sheets of the handwriting exemplar with your left hand. Are you okay with that? We'll do our best. Uh, I know that started taking a while with the left hand thing. Did you do it with your right hand already? Yes. yes. That went fairly quick. Um, I'll read it out to you, and then we'll, just like we did last time. So, okay. first line: Stevie, follow up. Next line: one, two, six, zero, little brave. Next line, blonde, older, and short. Get two lines and get help in car in garage.
new line, take to bank, get Russ money. line should be 800 to 180,000. One, two, six, zero, little brave. Blonde, older, and short. Get help in car and garage. Take the bank, get Ross money. Should be eight hundred to one hundred eight thousand. One, two, six, zero, little brave.
blonde, older, and short. And then get up in car in garage. Take the bank, get up Russ money. Should be eight hundred to one hundred eighty thousand. One, two, six, zero, little break. Blonde, older, and short. Get up in car in garage. Take the bank, get Russ money. Should be eight hundred to one hundred eight thousand.
Stevie Fowl help. One, two, six, zero, blow for eight. Blonde, older, and short. Get up in car in garage. Take the bank, get Russ money. Should be eight hundred to one hundred eighty thousand. hand. It's okay. Glad to be done. feel like a little kid back in school writing sentences. <laughs> um, so the other thing was actually going back to Mr. Furrier's house to um, photograph the outside with this wood pile. Is your, would your mom or sister be home? They're home right now, yes. yes. Um, would they be able to speak with me just to verify you being home on those two dates in question yeah okay um do you want to call on another other comment uh yeah Don't just use my phone. okay um and those were the two things you wanted to accomplish while we're all your i suggest is. going to the back door because they don't answer the front door well, i mean I'll, we will meet you over there if that's oh okay, okay so we're all going over there together However, Okay. I mean, we drive separately or? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I don't know that I need to be there. But I'll just meet you after. Okay. We'll pick a spot. And then while we're over there, we'll check on anybody that would have video cameras outside. You're talking about the neighbor. That'd be great. Just to see if there's something that records anything. Um, yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm not sure that he does. My sister mentioned it the other day. Okay. Okay. When I was talking about all this, she said, oh, it looks like so and so. And we're just trying to, obviously, if you look at the note, somebody is aware that there's, there's something that resembles a wood pile and they have an address. Um, so we're just trying to verify that that may or may not exist. It would showed us that somebody obviously drove by there to make a note or something of it. Mm -hmm. um, that's really all I need to do is, is your dad at home or at work or? Um, what time is it? Like 11-ish. By the time we get there, he'll be at work. Where does he work at? He works at Schnucks right here, oh. the one right across the highway. What's he do there? Uh, he's a maintenance guy. How long has he been there? Oh, shit. Probably 
forever. 25 years or more. Okay. I, mean, he's... I, I have never met your dad, have I? No. That's why I thought they were separated or divorced. I he's a homebody. Seen... He goes to work and goes to sleep. <laughs> I've never seen him. Okay. But he goes in. He goes in at 12 today. If you needed to talk to him, that's okay. where he'll be. All right. Um, I believe that's it. Did you have any questions or any? Uh, do you have a business card or something we can get? So yeah, you know, we need to check on my phone. Yeah, would you call? He said when you left, he said he's going to contact you with the phone immediately. Okay. So call my cell, and then because well, he called me every few hours because I'm saying well, my phone too because your cell phone's in my phone. <laughs> okay. Good, good point. I don't remember phone numbers. Who does? Right. right? You don't have to anymore. No. I tell my phone right. call this person and it calls them. Getting off so accident plane went down and the only number the person who was involved was could remember was my number so they called yeah they they didn't know their family's numbers so they just plugged them in but they knew mine so I had to contact the family to say what was going on I mean he called me and said would you please contact me to let somebody know actually it was, it was good news he was okay oh. but you know, it was, it was um, do you mind wait, wait, wait like one second while I go make sure I covered everything? Um, I, don't, I don't think I would hang to it. I forgot one thing. Okay. Give me one second. thing that I did not I'm supposed to actually last time but we were short for time. Um, this is what I was asking about. I don't I don't remember if this came up from an interview with Pam Hub. Some incident at a hair salon with a female cousin where there's a confrontation over a Facebook posting. Yeah. Does anybody know that? It. I'm um, aware of it. Do you know what that is? Or? Yeah that was with Mary with that girl that was putting out false accusations towards myself and my cousin whose husband passed away. And my cousin went up there and confronted the girl. Do you know where this hair salon is? Or Yeah, it's a stone's throw from my house right there in Lake St. Louis in the plaza by Sports Authority. Um, Do you know the name of it? <sighs> something image. But it happened at in Lake St. Louis, do yeah. you know if the police were notified or no. involved at all? Here's here's what here's what I know. Okay. Um, Mary's husband passed away, and Mary is Mary Anderson, his cousin. Okay. Um, her husband, I think, of July third last heart year, attack, heart attack. Mm -hmm. Had a heart attack. Police were certainly called to that, um, and there was then there's been some fake names on the on posts on Facebook with, that we think were related to. Um, anyway, they were accusing her of killing her husband, and this particular person somehow got involved in that link, and Mary said something to her, because she had called me, um, and then somehow Pam Hub was aware. Uh, it's our belief that Pam Hub was a friend of this lady. Right. And so it happened at the hair salon mm -hmm. because Mary works there, or? No, because that girl works there. Okay, and do you remember the girl's name? I, I don't remember. I couldn't tell you. But she was the one. Do you think she had? And we, do you think she has some relation to Pam Hub? 
That, that was Mary believed. That was our theory, yes. There okay. was, there was. I, I assume you guys are aware of this. There was um, during the incident after the first trial, after the second trial, mm -hmm. uh, there were in, there were slurs directed at Mary and there were slurs directed at Michael Corbin, um, who was with Russ the night of Betsy's murder, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so things started to get a little out of hand. Um, over social they, media? Over social media. Okay. So I'm sure it's all still out there. Mm -hmm. He stayed off social media once he got out, for the most part. Um, but people were directing things at Mary and Anderson, as well as Michael Corbin. And there was a turned out, they, they believed that it was Miss Hopple. Okay. I don't know that it's ever been proven, but that's what they believed based on the information that was contained in the uh, social media posts. Okay. And the like Facebook posts or wherever these, like if you post comments on the post dispatch, for instance, you have to have some kind of Facebook account, I believe. Do you know what? Uh, I believe that woman posted something on Chris Hayes' Facebook. Okay. Yeah, if you go back and look at maybe Robert Patrick's post and Chris Hayes and Fox 2, okay. and you go, there's a, it goes on and on and on and on. Do you know about you when know? this happened at the hair salon? Mm -hmm. It would have been. It would have been after July last year. Yeah, and that's when Mary's husband passed away. Yeah, and his name is Steve Anderson. And they live in. They live here in O'Fallon. Well, Steve's passed away now. Okay, but I mean, if um, if he died at home, why you guys were there? Yes, we were there. Yes, you yeah. guys were there. Where, where they live at? Do you know the address uh, or street name? Homefield Square Court. Okay. Literally two minutes from here. Where did they live at before that? Uh, somewhere over in St. Charles. I couldn't tell you. They've been okay. over here in O'Fallon for years. Okay. All right. That was um. That came up in an interview. This incident at a hair salon. I'm so. I didn't ask you the last time because we got cut short on time. He was, you weren't there, were you? You weren't involved at all. I was with Mary that day. Oh, did, she, did you go in? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. And the, it's the hair salon that's in the same I was the one that was actually the one that pulled her out of there and said, come on, you need to go now, Mary. <laughs> but the police weren't involved at all? No. And it was the woman that was making these postings or, or making the comments works there? Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's in the plaza where Sports Authority used to be? Yeah. Does that say, okay. Next to, I think it's next to the shoe store. Okay. All right. But it's the plaza right next to Walmart, so. All right. That, that was the one thing I didn't ask last time and asked this time. Okay, that's clearer, I guess. All right. Um, so, I will, me and another guy will come over to your house and then, um, would you say knock on the back door or something? Or will you just be waiting for us? Uh, well, if I'm going to, yeah, I'll be waiting for you. Okay. Then uh, we'll do the photographs of the outside, uh, speak with your mom and if your sister's there, just to confirm what you told about uh, you being home on last Wednesday and then about what time you got home generally August 10th. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then your dad will probably be at work at Chinooks by. Does he work? A regular schedule or? Uh, they've been messing with his schedule a little bit, so sometimes he works 8 to 4 and other times he works 11 or 12 to 7 or 8. Today is his... About 40 hours a week? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, but he's, today he's working from 12, I think, to 8. All so right. He'll be at work all day today. Okay, awesome. Anything else? Awesome. Not off the top of my head. And you got the you guys got my card? Yes, sir. I have your card. I get the phone. I'll let you know. Yeah, just call me, and then he'll be calling me. And, and then we'll figure out how to go back to you. He'll probably just shoot up here and get it. Okay. He lives up here. I'll pick it back up here. Sure. Okay. If that's what you want to do. Yeah. Um, let's go back down the loop. Okay.
Well, two of Pam Hupp's victims are talking about the TV miniseries in which they are portrayed. And Fox Files investigator Chris Hayes talked with Carol McAfee and Russ Faria about both the good and the bad. There are a lot of things that got left out. Russ Faria and Carol McAfee spoke from Russ's workplace, all lubed up cycles in St. Charles. It's something to keep me busy and it's something that I enjoy doing. Russ and Carol say it's impossible to wrap up a decade of drama into one six episode series. Carol said real heroes were forgotten. More than anybody, his cousin Mary is the reason that he's standing over there. She's the one that got Joel. She's the one that helped with the behind the scenes collecting all the evidence. Russ Faria spent more than three years in prison after a wrongful conviction for the murder of his wife Betsy. Police and prosecutors at the time were suspicious of Russ immediately, but not because of evidence. Instead, they questioned Russ's demeanor and his 911 call, which Russ says was portrayed perfectly by the actor who played him. Wow, the 911 call that he reenacted was fantastic. And uh, he and I worked really closely uh, when he was learning on uh, how to play my character. So I'm really happy with the way that came out as well. Carol McAfee was lured by Pam Hupp in 2016 before Hupp's murder of a man with disabilities. McAfee said the show's comedic tone often dampened the seriousness. People call Pam crazy. She's not crazy. Crazy kills you for no reason. She knew what she was doing. The problem is that she's so much of a narcissist, she thought she could get away with it. As Fox 2 first reported last May, Russ and Carol are now a couple. Their lives intersecting in love because of Pam Hupp's hate. Do you think there's some divine intervention? Yes. I do. I do. But they had to laugh at how the TV show brought them together. Ridiculous. We didn't meet in the courtroom, as you know. Uh, we actually met through another, through one of my friends who was a neighbor of hers. But again, they're trying to condense things. And I like the fact that they showed us together at the end and, and um, said that we were engaged, you know, because uh, the world needs to know there's a happy ending to things sometimes. A story just beginning for them as a couple and not yet over in their fight for justice against Pam Hupp. Hupp serving life in prison for Lewis Gumpenberger's murder and preparing to defend herself in trial for Betsy Faria's murder. For the Fox Files, I'm Chris Hayes.